when stuff goes bang, it goes bang. It's quite a high pressure sort of environment. We'll be opening our laptops at home on Sunday night. That's what makes this job so passionate. Hello, and welcome back to the Inside Track with me, Matt Majedi. Now this week, we're giving you a sneak peek behind the curtain at Red Bull Racing. I was lucky enough to be given a tour by members of their research and development team to show in detail the design, the testing, kind of everything involved in building a race-winning Formula One car. It's not just what you see on the track, but so much more behind the scenes. So first up at their headquarters, just outside Milton Keynes, I spoke to Pete Lawson. Now he's the test group leader of Red Bull's research and development drivetrain department, bit of a tongue twister. And Pete's the cousin of the Lawson twins. Now, if you remember, Craig and Carl were previously on the podcast with us. Now, Pete is responsible for everything from the hydraulics to the clutch and the gearbox on the cars of Max Verstappen and Yuki Tsunoda. The, these gearboxes have a seamless shift. Yeah. Um, so it's really about changing gear, gear as quickly as possible. Um, and so it'll be way quicker than you can on your car. The driver pulls, pulls a paddle and, and it happens within, within milliseconds. So obviously Max and Yuki are at the top of their game changing gears, but if I was to sit in there and try, I, I'd be pretty quick to break a gearbox, would I? Uh, no, be doing it no you'd, you'd be absolutely okay. fine. Um, push the throttle, go, go change gear. Um, everything is done in the background from, from a controls point of view to, to make sure it works. Next, Pete took me through to their gearbox sign-off dyno, where he told me about the compromises his team has to work with when it comes to designing a gearbox. I think that, like with a lot of the car, the compromise in design of the gearbox is to give the aero packaging around it as much space as possible. Right. So we do a lot of development to squeeze our Smaller gearbox. is better. Smaller yeah. is better because it gives aero more space. And lighter always? Are you yeah, lighter, lighter always, yes, as well. But looking at different um, manufacturing process, different materials, just to, to make everything as light as possible, as well as being pretty stiff. After learning a bit more about the dyno itself, I wanted to know what happens when things go wrong on a race day, which they invariably do. Obviously, you're, you're hoping that things don't go wrong, but if, if things do, do go wrong on a Sunday, do you get a frosty call on a Monday? <laughs> Potentially, yeah. I mean, if it goes wrong on a Sunday, we'll be opening our laptops at home on Sunday night or, or very early Monday morning to look at the data from the sign-off to check we didn't yeah. miss something. Ho hopefully not. Um, but yes. Yeah, I think you're alluding to sort of no, no news is good news from us. Um, so the worst words you can hear is when you hear someone say gearbox failure or something. What would, yes. be, what would be that would be your, your worst words yes, on yeah, a Sunday? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, not to pass a book, but you hope it's maybe some numbers which have gone wrong, <laughs> which is out of control, not, not something we've, we've missed. Um, but. Pete then took me through to another dyno where they were testing the oil pump, but from Max Verstappen driving the Spanish Grand Prix. So hearing every single gear change of that particular race. That's so clever. Yeah, that absolutely. Was, I think the, amazing, the value really. in everything we can do in a rig test environment is, well, it just is very, very valuable mm -hmm. to do good rig testing because we don't have track testing time anymore. There used to be a test team. You could put yes, so much yeah. stuff on the car in the past, but now with running limited to what one or two weeks of pre-season testing mm -hmm. and then you're straight into a... Um, races where you've got Friday and Saturday so yeah. um, as much as we can do on the rigs as possible is, is better and as, a, as close as we can replicate the running conditions that these parts will see yeah. either in the gearbox or on the car the, the better. It's amazing to be brought in here because I don't think people have any concept that this much goes on behind no, a no, gearbox indeed. of yes. Yuki and yeah. Max's car for a yeah. race and there's this many people this many hours spent on Absolutely, making it yes. just right. Yeah. After that, it was time to see another dyno. This one, an absolute monster that pushes gearboxes to the limits. So this is a fully transient gearbox dyno. When we say fully transient, its response um, can exactly replicate the engine performance. So we can put a gearbox on here. We can take data from Silverstone last weekend if we wished, um, and then replay that lap. So it could be Max's qualifying lap or whatever. Put it on this dyno and and run, run that lap to see how the gearbox performs. We run endurance testing, so this is where we will run thousands of kilometers to prove out gearboxes, at the, normally at the start of the season. So we've already done that for this gearbox, especially this, so say, generation of gearbox, because yeah. we're a few seasons in, but coming very soon, we're starting our development testing of new hardware for 2026. So when will that, when will we start testing? The um, towards the end of the year, we've okay. already started testing um, 
simulation laps mm -hmm. for 2026, but only on current generation gearboxes because the right. hardware doesn't doesn't exist yet. But from our simulation group, we've got a, a lap replay, so we know what it should look like. We can then pop that into this dyno and run a current gearbox through. Moving through to another part of the gargantuan factory at Red Bull Racing, I was taken to the R&D design lab to learn from Matt Tibbenham, a senior R&D engineer who designs the kit that tests various car parts and puts it under all manner of stresses and strains. Yes, yeah, so, so we see a whole lot of parts coming through this lab. Um, and what I love about the job actually is that you sort of get to design parts here and you get to head straight out there and put it together and see it working. So it's quite a high pressure sort of environment because we tend to be the last guys in the chain. So. Obviously, you've got the aero guys feeding into design. That's all going through FEA, the structures department. And then we get the first component. And normally then we've absorbed all sort of the time in the plan and it has to be tested. Hopefully it works. And then it's getting built across the road in the assembly base. So do you almost get the least time of anyone in that train because everyone pushes their... You know, a, a, their little bit, a little, little bit, bit, yes. But the thing we have in our, in our favour is that actually the tooling is generally quite straightforward. We try and make it that way. So... There's no prizes here for sort of making parts lightweight and you know it's not going around the track so we tend to make stuff as stiff as possible and as strong as possible so that any stiffness we see is a reflection of the car part rather than the rig bending. And can you remember an occasion the most sort of catastrophic one or is there what a sort of a moment like that that sticks in that sticks in the mind or? Um, I can't think of a specific, uh, well obviously some of the some of the biggest tests we've done we've broken and then that, that can be pretty catastrophic but what, what's amazing actually is sort of having worked in companies outside of F1 before here is the speed in which you can react in an F1 team like it's amazing because uh, we've had like a failure on say like a wishbone or something and within like um, hours someone's programming the fix it's getting machined there's a there's a solution underway all the teams pull together and it's, it's just this the speed of sort of the reaction to fix the problem is so immense. How soon might you have another wishbone then? To, oh, how quickly is that turnaround from catastrophe to being able to have a go again. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like within a week or two weeks. Okay. I mean, you can machine things overnight, you know, and yeah. we, can, we can work 24 hours if we have to. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing and the, the facilities we have and the machines we have and the people we have, it all sort of comes together. And it's, it's stressful, but that's some of the most exciting times, to be honest, as well. So Matt told me the team mentality at Red Bull is what makes the job for him, really. Because people don't see that all the all the sort of parts of people that come together to make it possible. What, what does it mean to be part of Red Bull Racing, to be part of this team, for, for you personally? Yeah, I think I really enjoy it. I think, as I said, I think it's that sort of team mentality, sort of having worked from a supplier before where you're sort of making parts to give to a team, to actually be part of the team, and you sort of feel that success all together. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really enjoyable atmosphere here. And, uh, yeah... I think you, you do feel like you're all pulling towards the same goal. So, and yeah. so when there's a race win on a on a Sunday, then you sort of that's where you really it all comes together. Yeah, right? yeah, and everyone's in a good mood on the Monday, and we also have a debrief across the road, and everyone has a glass of champagne and sort of toasts to the success. And um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's really good. Julien Ludier was the next person I spoke to. He's R and D test group leader for the chassis, basically the outer shell of the Red Bull racing car. I was curious to know when it comes to the main structure of the car, how nervous the team gets during this stress testing. Is there always sort of a nervousness at a lot of these tests? Oh because yes. <laughs> does that get I any mean, better? Some. Um, yeah, it does. Okay. You, you, you get used to it, but um, that kind of test that we don't do routinely. So every year you get a little bit of a scary, scary moment. I mean, some of the tests were putting 30 tons on, on the side of the car, so it's it's huge. Yeah. That is a lot of weight. But so, what? What are the most? So, would the most stressful period then be that November, the new car? Yeah. Because you're testing these things for the very first time in that kind of window. Correct. And one thing that you have to remember is the first test never moves. This, this deadline is there, it's fixed. But the part coming into us, inevitably, they get later and later. So we are at the end of the process. Uh, our time is. Can, can, can be quite tight, yes. With the 2026 season fast approaching and with all the regulation changes that come with it, I wanted to know how Julien was feeling going into next year. And how excited are you for next season then? Are you, like, I mean, you're talking about testing the new bits for next season, there's trepidation. It's, it's going to be a challenging winter. Yeah. Um, no doubt about that. Yeah, it's the biggest uh, regulation change that we are facing over probably the last 10, 15 years. So well, it's, going to be, it's going to be interesting, but... You know, we like a challenge, that's why we're here. Next was Sandeep Bavra, a senior R&D engineer who's been at Red Bull for 10 years. He's carrying out what he said was effectively servicing for specific car parts. Yes, so we have a uh, rear track rod here, 
Um, so where's that on the car? That is on the rear end. It would uh, bolt onto the um, upright and then onto the uh, gearbox. Yeah. Okay. And essentially we're doing here a, uh, a proof test. So this will enable us to ascertain the component stiffness. And uh, with that, we can tell whether it's kind of good to go back on the car. Okay. Um, so it's been through a few races already. It's kind of like a service almost. Exactly that, yeah, yeah. exactly that. Yeah, so it's a service. And Sandeep told me their testing can help them work out how many races each specific component will be able to last for. And that's helping them budget for and plan for the whole season. And I asked him what a bad day at the office, of which there's been a few, looks like. God, have you had some bad days at the office? We've had some bad days. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, yeah. how do you recover from a day like that? We're very uh, reactive. Um, you have to own it. You know, if, if, if you're the one that's that's kind of caused the problem, put your hand up and, yeah. and, and say you've owned it. But we're, we're so reactive here and we have departments that we, we've turned stuff around. You know, we've, for example, had mishaps with some components that are time critical, needed, for the, needed at the track for the next day. And somehow overnight, we turn it around and create any other component or we test it again. And what a buzz though, when you it, pull that oh, off. It's such a buzz because I mean, th that's what, that's what makes this job so passionate. Like, it's all good seeing the cars run on track, but to look at it from a TV point of view, you know, we're, we're, we're at the backstage of it here. We don't get to be in the track and take the glory, but when you see a car going around the track and you know that you've put in two or three months of hard graft to get every single component put through, you know, durability tests like this, and it goes around the track and gives you because you, know, yeah, you really feel a part of that yeah, success, yeah, yeah. don't exactly you? Exactly that. Yeah. But look, everyone contributes to that. We have we have massive um, help from all the departments to get to that end goal. Um, the final part of my day at Red Bull HQ was spent with Daniel Gilbert, an R&D technician who taught me through a procedure they use to test extreme braking and even minor collisions. So this test in particular is actually taking um, all the extreme like loading cases that we'll see in the car. So say very heavy braking or hitting a curb, stuff like that. We want to make sure that these can withstand the strongest forces that we see on the track. The guys upstairs in stress work it out and then they give it to us and we simulate those forces in real life here. But you have different, I see this, um, something going on there that, that is actually simulating a, a part going through a specific race. Is That's that right? right, yeah. So uh, behind me is the, uh, the pass rack, which is our, our steering rack. Um, which is basically being fed uh, data that we've taken off. Uh, I think this is Max's car. So Max's uh, steering inputs are being driven through our rig to make sure that the parts can uh, withstand what we expect to see on track. So, so from data from one specific race? That's correct. So yeah. say from a practice session, we'll be able to take that data off his, uh, say his, his steering inputs, and then uh, we can put it directly into our rigs to recreate that yeah. however many times we want to test our parts. We can vary our tests from testing pedals so we can get the data of say, Max or Yuki's uh, brake pressure. We can run that through laps um, to test the integrity of our pedals. Uh, and then also we can go all the way up to a full car. So we have a, a, our own seven post rig, which is basically where we get the bare car uh, with wheels on it. And we can basically bounce the car um, according to what forces we've seen on track. Um, and translate that into a rig that we can test and test and test. And he described their main purpose behind the work at that facility, ensuring that things go bang behind the scenes so they don't go bang on the track. You know, when stuff goes bang, it goes bang, but that's what we're here for. We're sort of here to make sure that we catch those incidents before yeah. they're sent out onto a track. You know, God forbid it gets sent onto a car with a driver in it. That could be messy. So we prefer to discover those faults here. What's, what's your favourite part of the role then? What do you enjoy most? I think it's the fact that R&D is such a central hub. We work with yeah. people from stress. We work with the guys who build up the car, sub-assembly, the hydraulics guys. Um, we are really a central part of where we start seeing the physical parts being built up. You know, we're, we're working closely with inspection. Um, and there, it's a very sort of big synergy here. That's all for this week. Thanks for joining us here on the Inside Track podcast. Remember to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, or all three if you fancy. Search for the Inside Track podcast or check out the show notes. The Inside Track is funded and made by BBC Studios, a commercial company that's wholly owned by the BBC. It's produced and edited by John Weeks. Video editing and social media is by Georgina Revel, and James Cook is the executive producer. 